Hello students, today in your algebra class we're going to be working on exploring numbers and adding real numbers. At the end of this lesson you should be able to identify types of numbers and add real numbers. So quick warm-up problems. Um, this would be a really good time for you to pause your screen. Hopefully you've paused your screen and now you're just coming back to check your answers. Now a variable is a letter typically a letter or symbol that represents a number. And I said typically it's a letter or symbol because sometimes, and you'll see later as we go through this year, that a variable usually tells us how something is affected. So when we go out, say, to go play sports, there are, vari there are several variables involved, like weather is a variable, because it could be hot or it could be cold. The condition of the, say, grass that we're playing on, if it's good grass or if it's just dirt, those are all variables. Let's try number two. Now, this is just a basic PEMDAS problem, or order of operations problem. And remember, we have our modified PEMDAS right here, and we're just going to go down the line. So parentheses, we do have these, so we're going to deal with that first. So we have 36, 36 divided by 3, and then we're going to deal with our parentheses first, so 2 plus 2 squared. Now 2 squared is 4, so notice how we're just simplifying the inside of the parentheses, so 2 plus 4 is 6. Now we're going to look at multiplication and division. So in this instance we have both multiplication and division. So in this case we go from left to right. So we're going to do 36 divided by 3 first, which is 12, then we're going to multiply that by 6 and that gives us 60. So we're just going to define a couple numbers and we're going to use this image on the upper right hand corner to help us. So first of all we have natural numbers. Now natural numbers, if I asked you to count, you would probably start off with 1, 2, 3, etc. So our natural numbers are the numbers that come naturally as we count them. Whole numbers are going to be just like the natural numbers, so 1, 2, 3, etc. But it's also going to include 0. Integers are the whole numbers plus the negatives. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, but we also have the negative numbers as well. So we'll have negative 3, negative 2, and this is going to go infinitely long in both directions, left and right. So rational numbers are numbers that can be put into a fraction of integers. For example, negative 5 fourths is a rational number. But what's not rational are numbers like 0.456 divided by Three. Now notice in this case we have a fraction, but they're not a fraction of integers, therefore the one on the right is not rational. Irrational numbers are numbers that cannot or that are not rational. Pretty easy. So we've made this table below, or we've made this table to help kind of just go through the process. Now when we add real numbers, there's a couple things we have to discuss, which is the inverse property of addition. It states that for every real number n, there is an additive inverse, negative n, such that n plus negative n equals zero. So in English, what that's saying is that if we have any number, say four, then there is a number that's the opposite of it, so that when we add them, it will be zero. So inverse is a fancy word for opposite. So if we were to say the inverse of night, that would be day. Inverse of tall would be short. You get the idea. So the inverse of 4 would be negative 4. And when we add those two numbers, that'll give us 0. So sometimes you'll hear us reference you know, to add the inverse. So I made this table, and this is what we're going to look at now. It says, are you adding real numbers 
adding numbers with the same sign. So if we are adding numbers with the same sign, that's a yes, obviously, and we're going to go to the left. Then it says to add numbers with the same sign, we add their values. The sum has the same sign as their add-ends. Add-ends is a fancy word for the two numbers that we're adding up. For example, if you look below, we have negative 4 plus 5. So notice they both have the same sign. So we're going to add them up. 4 plus 5 is 9, but both of those numbers are negative, so they're going to keep the sign, so negative 9. If the answer were a no, that the numbers don't have the same sign, we're going to find their different, or we're going to find the difference of their absolute values, and then the sum has the same sign as the add in with a greater absolute value. So again, in English, notice in the example below, it says 2 plus negative 8. So these two numbers do not have the same sign. So because they don't have the same sign, we're actually going to subtract them. So however you want to look at this, let's say you look at it as 8 minus 2. Well, 8 minus 2 is 6. So we subtract that we found their difference, which is 6. However, we need to keep the sign of the larger number. So 2 or 8, which is larger, 8, and 8 has a negative, so this would be a negative 6. So let's try a couple of quick practice problems. Number 1 says 5 plus negative 7. So these signs are not the same, so we're going to find their difference. 7 minus 5 equals 2, and because 7 is a larger number, we're going to keep that sign, and 7 is negative, so the answer will be negative 2. Number 2, do they have the same sign? No, so we're going to find their difference. So the difference between 7 and 6 is 1, and 7 is negative, or 7 is a larger number and it's negative, so negative 1 is your answer. Example 3, do they have the same sign? Yes, so we're going to add them up. 8 plus 5 is 13, and we're going to keep their sign, and they're both negative, so negative 13. So notice as we work through those first three practice problems, we ask the same question every time. Are they the same sign? Yes or no? So number four and five are slightly spicier. Now notice that we're adding the entire way. So because of that, we're going to go from left to right. So we have negative five plus six plus negative eight. So going from left to right, we have negative five plus six. Are the signs the same? No, they're not. So we're going to subtract them. 6 minus 5 is 1. And then we're going to keep the sign of the larger number, which is 6. And 6 is positive. And then we're going to go ahead and do the plus negative 8. And we're going to ask ourselves the questions again. Are they the same sign? No. So we're going to find their difference. 7 minus 1 is 7. And because 8 is the larger number and it's negative, we're going to say it's negative 7. Number 5, same idea. We have 4 plus negative 6 plus negative 7. We're going to do, we're going to go from left to right. So 4 plus negative 6, do they have the same sign? No. So we're going to subtract them. The difference between 6 and 4 is 2. And because 6 is the larger number and it's negative, this will be negative 2. Then we're just going to drop the negative 7 because we didn't use yet. So now we have negative 2 plus negative 7. Can you guess what the next question I'm going to ask is? Good. Do they have the same sign? And in this instance, yes, they do. So we're going to add them up. 2 plus 7 is 9. And keep the larger sign, or keep the sign, which is negative. So negative 9 is your final answer. Now it's your turn. Simplify these three problems and write these down on your notes, and we'll look at them in class tomorrow. That's all for now. I'll see you guys next time.